Hey, hi, and hello. In this video, I'm gonna go through my latest update of the vector field asset, uh, which I used to create this vector field, which then is used inside of a VFX graph to do something cool like this. Obviously, you can use it for many other types of effects, um, but that's up to your creativity. So let's just jump into it directly. To open this uh, asset, after you import it, obviously, from the, uh, the store, uh, you click Window, Vector Field V2, and I'm going to show you only the, the Pro version in this tutorial. The, uh, the Light version, which is free, does not have import functionality and is limited to 15 arrows uh, per texture or precision. Um, so let's start by showing you what does this vector field look like and it's uh, this one here so I just imported this guy and you can see how it visualizes all of the forces right and in this window you have uh, you know your list of, of arrows uh, absolute would affect all of the uh, the values for all of the pixels basically in this 3D texture and a force field is a 3D texture essentially a relative and you can see this is your uh, created arrow a relative type would have an inner radius and an outer radius and the force is um, is applied as is in inside of the inner radius, right? So it's 0.8 inside of this red stuff, and it fades out inside of your outer radius. And I added a new one in the last update, which is inverse uh, uh, relative, which would do kind of the opposite. Inside of the inner range, it's not going to do anything, and it's going to increase gradually inside of the outer range. All right, and obviously, if you want to change uh, the direction of these guys, you can just uh, uh, select the tip of the arrow and change uh, change its position. Also, you can do the same for the base of the arrow, or uh, you can even use rotation and scale if you want to make it bigger. But it doesn't doesn't work that that great. Anyways. Let's delete this guy. We have other types, obviously. We have multiply. And you can also select your arrow by clicking on this uh, uh, this icon here. Let's move this multiply one near to some of the old stuff that we already have in the texture. And multiply have also an inner and an outer radius, which uh, it will multiply what's inside of the inner one exactly the same and fade out outside. So you can see the effect if we go to zero, for example, it would uh, multiply all the values by zero, which would basically remove um, you know any force. And it, it does fade inside of the, the outer radius. Um, a cool thing that I can enable right now is that if you click on this real-time checkbox and you have this real-time texture, it, it's created automatically. Uh, if we go ahead and assign that to our VFX graph, it would uh, the VFX graph would use this, um, this thing and it would update in real-time. So you can see how this affects the force field in real time. It's quite cool, right? And the last one is the suck mode, which um, creates a suction, and we have to put this to like one or something like that, which would create a field that uh, goes inwards towards the center of this arrow basically um, and then you can also 
you can also go in the reverse value which would make a repellent effect something like this right and what else yeah that's it for the sty the, the types uh, you can duplicate arrows by doing control shift and D this would duplicate it and if you if you hold control you can choose multiple arrows also if you click on the first one and hold shift and click on the last one it will choose everything in between and as long as things are selected if you change something in one of them it's going to change in all of them even the mode uh, and obviously to delete stuff you can select multiple and hit the minus button which would delete now uh, a new feature that I added was to export these arrows into a JSON file, which works like this. You just export it into some JSON file and say we delete these or whatever, we go to uh, another texture or whatever. You can import these arrows and they are going to be here. And lastly, is uh, uh, that I added these two fields here. The first one is, do you want uh, your output value inside of the texture to be signed or unsigned? Signed is basically between a negative and a positive value and unsigned is only a positive value, which then the VFX graph would convert into a minus and, uh, or negative and positive. Uh, so, uh, and the particle system force field component uh, can take a force field, but it has to be uh, signed. It doesn't work on unsigned ones. Um, and so signed ones uh, have a ha uh, RGBA half and RGBA float. Uh, most of the times you are just going to use half because it's uh, it takes less space in the, the desk, basically. The output, uh, the resulting texture is going to be smaller uh, and it is 16 bit per channel and float is going to be uh, double that so we are working with a signed one and you just select what, whatever thing you want and then you save texture and you can save your texture right uh, the unsigned would break this because our vfx is, is, is expecting uh, a signed texture rather than an unsigned uh, but anyways um, this has this 565 which is a bit um, imprecise because it's uh, it, it takes only five bits for the R which is which maps to the X axis and six to the green which is uh, the Y axis and five bit to the blue which is the Z axis um, and so you, you might not find the result for using this um, as accurate as you want. Um, in most of the cases, you are going to use the uh, RGB 24, which is total of 24 bits, 888 for X, Y, Z. Uh, you can use this for more uh, accuracy, but it's going to take a bit more space uh, from your from you know the output uh, texture. Um, yeah. But that's uh, that's basically it. So um, I'm gonna jump to the VFX graph to show you. It's very simple. Uh, we have a constant spawn over uh, rate, and uh, here we are setting. I think setting the color here doesn't matter much. We have a random lifetime, and we are setting the position to be inside of a box. Um, coordinates as our vector field force which is um, which is affecting our particles right the vector field is going to be our texture and we just have parameterized intensity and drag you can change those in the inspector as you wish and then I have a set lifetime which is basically killing all particles that are slow right so I'm getting the velocity I'm getting the length of that uh, because velocity is vector 3 which gives me uh, just one number a float and I'm comparing if it is less than uh, 0 0.01 then 
the, the output of this branch is zero. Otherwise, we're just gonna get our lifetime. So set lifetime to zero if the velocity is less than 0 0.01. And the output is, uh, I'm using a quad uh, additive mode, then the orientation is along the velocity so that uh, the, the, the orientation of the particle is towards where it is moving. Set size, set uh, uh, scale Y, so that it's like just a line, basically. And um, add scale on Y, which would, uh, sorry, which would, um, this is gonna make the, the length of the, the line zero, and then this is gonna add uh, to the length of each particle based on how fast it is moving. And we are doing set color by speed, so the faster it's moving, the different uh, the color of each particle is. And uh, yeah, so that's that's our particle system. And thank you so much for watching. And make sure to check out these assets. The links are going to be in the description. And have a nice one.